Hey guys, welcome back to The Mess Mixologist. Thanks for joining us and I hope you're all keeping well. Today we've got an interview with Becky Milton, Yacht Charter Specialist at Blue Water based in Monaco. What we'll do, go across to the interview, have a chat with Becky and then let's come back and make her favourite drink. Well, I'd like to welcome Becky Milton to the show. Becky's Yacht Charter Specialist from Blue Water. Hey Becky, how are you? Right, Maguire. Very well, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Where are you based at the moment then? I'm based in Antique, well, the office is in Monaco, uh, but due to current conditions, I'm working from home a lot, as you know. Yeah. Uh, but Antibes is my base, that's where I live. It's, it's been my home for a little while now. Very nice indeed. So let's, let's get into like what makes Becky Milton who she is. Obviously we're friends, but everyone else doesn't know you as well as I do. So I know you're a sailor. Tell us how you got into that in the early days. Well, I'm a bit of an unusual one because most sailors, especially racers, they, they've done it since they were kids. Uh, but I, I didn't get into it when I was a kid. In fact, I was sat on Brighton Beach about 13 years ago, watching all the pretty yachts go up and down, going, oh, wish I had a mate with a yacht. And then a couple of weeks later, my neighbour came around and he went, oh, I'm, I'm going to do the competent crew certificate. Do you want to do it with me? And I went, what's that? <laughs> And it was this week where you paid, you go and you learn how to sail and you get a nice certificate at the end of it that says competent. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the first time I've ever been called competent. Um, so, in fact, he didn't go and do it. I did it and he did do it. And I, do you know what? Up until that point, it was probably the best week of my life, Maguire. Really? I, just, I was hooked from that point onwards. And where did you do that? UK or abroad? In Brighton. Oh, in Brighton? Yeah, in, in fact, we sailed, we sailed from Brighton. It was a little old um, boat. What was the boat called? Anyway, a little old 30, 30 foot boat. I was going to say metre. That's how. <laughs> you spent too long <laughs> in the city of well, Becky. <laughs> yeah, 30 foot boat. And we sailed to Southampton, down your neck of the woods. Yeah. Um, and I had a bit of a jolly around the old Solent, came back and I went, right, this is, this is for me. And then for the next couple of years, I spent all my weekends and all my holidays just getting my sailing miles, my nautical miles. And I worked through my day skipper and my yacht master and just did loads and loads of racing, ruined my knees. <laughs> and, and yeah, that's, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't a water person at all before then. So it's actually, you can, do, you can get into it quite late in life. Okay, I mean, one question for me. So if someone's watching that, wants to get into sailing you got the certificate how did you then find a boat to race on so once you've once you've done your competent crew you don't have to do competent crew it doesn't have to be quite that structured but once you know your way around a boat it is quite easy to find a boat to race on and certainly in the Solent if you're lucky yeah. enough to live Southampton Portsmouth all those really saily places um, Cork you know you, you just go on to, there's a couple of websites, I think one's called Crew Finders, but you just go to your local yacht club and just put a little sign up on the, on the notice board saying, oh, I'm looking for a boat. And there's always, I mean, it helps if you're a girl because there's a, always a lot of older male owners. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they go, oh, all right. Okay, will you wear a bikini? <laughs> like, no, nobody wants to see that, mate. Um, but well, not at our crazy. age, but maybe when we're younger. Yeah, exactly. Back in the day, maybe, maybe. But honestly, it's actually quite easy because there's a lot of owners that have that, you know, I say smaller yachts, I mean like 30, 40, 50 foot yachts um, who do need crew to get the yacht out of the marina and go sailing. You can't always just do it on your own or with your missus. So people do need crew. And if you're happy to do it for free, then you'll you'll build up your and once you get into that community, hanging out at the yacht clubs. You meet, you meet loads of boat owners and, yeah, yeah. to a penny, to a penny, mate. <laughs> Happy day. So how did you get from yacht racing in the Solent to charter broker in Antiva, Monaco? Do you know what, actually, it's funny. You, do you ever, like, look back at your life path and figure out how you got where you are? No, I often look at back at mine with just tears of regret, but no <laughs> one. <laughs> that's that's because you're always hung over, Maguire. <laughs> I so I've pinned this down to one guy. So when I did my day skipper, which is a quite a low down certificate, you do competent crew for a week, then you can do your day skipper pretty much straight afterwards. Um, and my instructor for day skipper 
was a guy called Adam in Brighton and, and we stayed friends. So he was my instructor, we stayed friends. A couple of years later, he moved to, he went, oh, I'm gonna to move to Antibes. And I went, oh, where's that? Is that in the Caribbean? <laughs> 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 right now it's in the south of France and then for ages for years he was like emailing me going you've got to come down you could get a job on a boat it's brilliant here um and in the end I think about 10 years ago I was going through a particularly messy breakup as usual <laughs> <laughs> I, went, <laughs> I went right that's it I'm off to France I sent my CV out to about 30 companies in between Monaco and here and a couple of them are replied. I had interviews and, and I went with Blue Water in the end. And uh, the rest, as they say, Maguire. Yeah, it's history. history. Yeah. I remember the first time I met you, you just came running into the Blue Water office with tickets for something incredibly glamorous. And I was like, wow, I'm like, who is that? So you've now entered the world of super yachting. There's, yeah. for, I know the weird and wonderful of requests. What's the weirdest demand you've had? The weirdest demand, what, from a guest or an, or an owner? Well, let's go with both. worth individual. Yeah, go with both. Oh, my God. There are so... That is... Do you know what? That is a podcast series all of its own, mate. Have we got a spin-off already? We have got a spin-off. <laughs> because, unfortunately, it's funny, because um, I was talking about this to my colleague yesterday, because I said, I said, oh, I think Ben's going to ask me... Um, what was the weirdest ever request? And we went through all the funny ones that we've had. And most of them I can't tell you on, on air. I can't oh, no. publicly. But I promise when I next see you, I will tell you everything over a gin and tonic. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm down. I'm down. Due down. I booked on a flight for the 27th of March. So fingers crossed. And I promised I'm going to bring you down some drinks. Amazing. Yeah. So, well, give us, give us one demand that you can tell us then. Right, so there's a there's I mean there's there's the ones that everyone's heard of like we've had we we did have a client that will only bathe in Evian. <laughs> you have to fill the bath with Evian water. Uh, that's actually not that uncommon. You'd be amazed. And you get wow. you always get the ones where the the guests or the owners they fly in their pets by private jet. But one of my favourites is the the flying in the pets by private jet is not actually that unusual. But my favourite is. <laughs> We had this guy on board, I think they were in the Greek island and uh, the crew could not, um, could not procure his favourite brand of toothpick. I say tooth because I'm from Bristol, isn't it? Bristolian, like. <laughs> so they couldn't get his, his favourite brand and he went, well, I've got to have my, I think they were flavoured or something special. So he flew in by private jet, these toothpicks, I, I think it cost like 80 grand. And I was sat there thinking, those toothpicks are living a better life than you or me today. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've got some here. If you needed some, I'd have posted them, Becky. Fly them over, mate. Fly them over. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, it's, it's a difficult one because I've, I've been drinking with you a lot of times, so I feel I know some of your kind of like drink routine, but what's, what's the best drink you've had and where? Best, the best drink I've had and where? The best drink I've... The best drink I've had and where, it's a bit, it's a bit of a, um, an, it's like an emotional memory really, because I was in, I was ticking something off my bucket list, which was to go to the Ice Hotel in okay. Sweden. So I was inside the Arctic Circle by about a couple of hundred Ks. And obviously it's freezing because everything's made of ice, <laughs> including oh, yeah. the bed, everything is ice. <laughs> Hence the name, who's in the title. Gives it away, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and they've got this bar obviously made of ice. Um, and you can drink your Jaeger bomb from an ice glass and all that. Uh, but they also did this amazing, and it's so simple, so simple, but it was amazing. This, I guess it's a punch. It was spiced rum, but really good quality spiced rum. Um, a load of or fresh orange juice, orange oranges as well, and, and a yep. load of cin cinnamon sticks, and probably, I don't know, some star anise or something. But that was the main ingredient. And we used to, we took a, a hip flask with us because, you know, we knew we would be going out into the snowy wilderness on snowmobiles looking for the northern lights. <laughs> and every time we had an excursion to go where we knew we were going to get freezing cold, we'd go into the bar and go, could I have some more of that punch, please? And they'd put, pop it in the old hip flask. Nice. And we'd go, yeah. No, well, no. Warm. Memories are, they definitely help a tribute to like, 
the best drink and or bet no, it's like your tomato soups of this world isn't it it's not necessarily like the best food you've ever but the memories attributed to like your childhood and tomato soup it's, make it quite special such a, it's like a taste memory isn't it it's like and yeah it's, I, I i completely get that i can think of quite a few especially with cocktails i think because cocktails are so special if you're having a good time you kind of link that to the cocktail you're drinking rum dac strawberry rum daiquiris for me that's another good memory that comes back when i think of them it's just yeah it's, there's a real nostalgia with good good cocktails yeah what about the worst drink you've been served or the biggest letdown you've ever had for the drink <laughs> let down um actually do you know what don't laugh but um i think this is basically an international crisis that we have on our hands at the moment Maguire. Oh, this is a global oh. tragedy where everywhere around the world right now in bars people are being served flat champagne flat, oh, really? and i want it to stop <laughs> I've, I've never known you do anything other than drink a bottle of champagne. So if it's flat, <laughs> it's got to be down to you not drinking it quick enough. No, but if you go, well, I mean, that's why I order bottles because if you just order a glass, they get flat. one out of the fridge from two days ago. I, it's just, it's not on, it happens all the time. And like, you have to go, oh, there's no bubbles in there and look like a right knob. <laughs> <laughs> so global crisis. In flat Global champagne, poison. something that will maybe this show could try and kind of start some campaign against it. Yeah, actually, yes, the anti-flatsers. <laughs> yes, right, right, I'll get I'll get onto that after this. We'll save so, the bubbles. We'll get Greenpeace so, onto it. Save the but I like that. Save the bubbles. Bring back the bubbles. <laughs> so I I heard you on one of our evenings somewhere. That I could have just been a little drunk, but I heard once you said that that. A rumour about mint and guests wanting a certain amount of mint in their bajito and a stewardess got into a spot of bother because she didn't put enough? Oh my, that's actually one of my funny yacht charter stories. So I could probably tell this one actually. So it's a very quick story. Uh, we had, because I used to be a crew agent for when I started at Blue Water, I was a crew agent. And so you get all the gossip from the crew coming in and they've been fired for this reason and that reason. This girl came in, she was devastated. <laughs> And she'd been fired from the yacht because Madame, as we was the owner's wife, uh, Madame had fired her because she hadn't put enough mint in the mojito. And I that, went, well, I, I completely agree. I don't know what you're so, <laughs> so upset about. <laughs> gross, full gross misconduct. You have paid not yeah. nearly enough attention That's to the mint leaves in this. And that was it, struck off. That was it, struck off. Struck up more quite of, rightly too. Quite more rightly of the, too. More of the story to the stews out there. Be careful how many mint leaves you use because it's, <laughs> yeah. it could be life or death. Yeah, and also, and I know, I know you love a syrup, but don't use sugar syrup in a mojito. Use the brown sugar, crush it. I don't want no syrups in my mojitos. Right, so I'm, I'm actually dead against that. And I'll tell you why, because Go on. as cool and funky as it seems to put <laughs> brown sugar uh, into a mojito, you're putting sugar into a cold drink. So what you end up yeah. with is just a granulated, non-sugary yeah. drink. Whereas yeah. if you put a syrup in there, you're actually getting the sugar that you're hoping to get out of the cold sugar granules that you've got in the drink. Right, okay, well you are the expert. So I'm but, not going to argue. But I just love I, when it crunches. I like crunching the sugar in. I didn't, maybe I, they're putting syrup in as well, because because if you get it right, it is sweet as well. But you're right, putting sugar into a cold drink doesn't make any scientific sense. No. So but I will try it at the end of the month. We'll try it and I'll, I'll bring down some... I actually made a homemade syrup for my mojito, a citrus one, but I don't have it here. But um, yeah, we're doing, we're doing I, a takeaway. I think if they're homemade and they're lovingly made like... You know, you obviously, you put a lot of your own time and, and genius into it, Maguire. <laughs> <laughs> but it's those, the ones that you can just buy off the, I just find them insulting, the ones that they're just like, oh, oh well, put some love into it, into my mojito, yeah. put some more mint in it as well. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I do agree. So as part of the show, I make someone's favourite drink. So what is your favourite drink? Hit us with it. 
My, fa my favorite drink, if I'm really gonna spoil myself, is it's something that I had when I was working, it, I used to work in Montenegro, big super yacht marina, very high end, lots of nice bars and restaurants. And one of the restaurants was like a Japanese restaurant and lovely food, I'm sure, but I used to just go in there for their ginger martini and they used to squeeze the fresh ginger uh, and then they'd squeeze, they'd juice the, the apples and it was just literally fresh ginger juice, apples, and maybe I think I had a squeeze of lime. And it was literally the best martini I had ever had. And in fact, because obviously martinis aren't cheap, they're like 15 euros a pop. I was starting to bankrupt myself going in there all the time, <laughs> drinking their martinis. So I had to learn how to make it at home. So I did, I, I do know how to make them, but right. I haven't made one for years. But again, it's the memory thing. It's the association with that time in Montenegro, Ginger martini. Yeah. Lovely. Well, I've, do, I've done my own take on it, which I'll do once we get off the interview, but I'm, I'll talk you through it. So we're going to use, well, first of all, we're going to use the King's Ginger. Um, it's a beautiful ginger liqueur with a hint of citrus to it. Um, nice. I found it in Waitrose, so I thought, for you, Becky, darling, Waitrose is the only place I should source. It's, it's Waitrose um, or nothing, Maguire. Waitrose. I, um, <laughs> I've, gone, I've, I've, I've ditched your smell off and I bought a bottle of Absolute Vodka for you. Uh, what, so you've upgraded to Absolute? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Absolutely not, is what we say. Where's my grey goose? Also, that's, that bottle's too small anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> For you, Becky, I actually bought the Magnum of grey goose. <laughs> Thank you, Maguire. That's all my pleasure. And then we're going to do that with some uh, freshly squeezed apple juice, some cloudy apple juice, um, <sighs> a touch of sugar syrup and a little dash of lime juice, freshly squeezed lime juice as well. So love, love. hopefully you'll like it over the camera and I promise you I'll bring some down at the end of the month. You promise, I can't wait. I promise. Make sure you get on that plane, Benjamin. I will, fingers crossed. Okay. Well, a big thanks for coming on the show, Becky. It's been fun. My pleasure, always a pleasure. Looking forward to seeing you soon and uh, yeah, stay safe. You too, see you Take soon. Take care, bye. Well, thanks for joining us, Becky, and giving us an insight into the charter world. Let's keep an eye on how many leaves we put in those mojitos so we all keep our jobs, especially me. Right, so Becky's drink was an apple and ginger teeny. It, it gave all those memories of our time in Montenegro, and I'm hoping I can make something that will be similar. So first off, we're going to put a double shot of vodka in there. We are using the absolute because I'm keeping the grey goose for uh, for special occasion. Um, we're then going to use 20 mils of the King's Ginger. Like I said, this is a ginger liqueur. It's got a little hint of citrus to it as well. Available online in the UK, stocked in Waitrose. Then I'm going to add 15 ml of freshly squeezed lime juice that we decanted earlier. We have iced our shaker already. We're going to add five mils of simple syrup. And we're going to add 75 mils of freshly squeezed apple juice. Do not use anything from concentrate in this. You need those natural flavors coming through. Then we're going to give that a good shake. Grab our strainer and into ideally our chilled martini glass. We've garnished that with a nice fresh slice of apple. Cheers to everyone. Cheers to Becky. Thanks for joining us. Oh, that's good, Becky. Tune in next week and we'll go through another drink. Stay safe, everybody. Thanks for joining.